This week I thought it would be fun to take this horn out for a spin. This is my Selma Koa Pistong. Um, it's even got the nice original mouthpiece. It's probably from the 1930s. There's a couple of medals, Geneva 1927, Liège 1930. Relatively low serial number, 331. So, yeah, I reckon probably 1930s. But this design of horn was really popular in France. And you see many examples of it right, you know, right through the middle of the 20th century. This has what we call an, an ascending third valve. So on normal horns, you go down a semitone, down a tone, and this valve will put you down a tone and a half. So, and then normally this valve would give you, but with this French design where the third valve actually puts you up, so this raises the instrument by a whole tone. So there's a few notes you really have to have your wits about you. And it's also got the rotary thumb valve here to put you into B flat. So we've got a compensating system going on here. Yeah, lovely, lovely instrument to play. And this fortnight with this instrument in mind, I've been just taking the opportunity to listen to one of my big heroes, the French horn player Lucien Teve. If you haven't heard Teve's playing before, it may come as a bit of a shock. He has this incredible timbre, this incredible, incredible vibrato, which it's a type of vibrato which is just not within my repertoire, though I would like to learn how to master it. It's sometimes you hear him play and it's almost like hearing a jazz tenor trombonist. And there's a lot of recordings um, surviving of his playing. Um, the first performance of the Poulenc Elegy with him and Poulenc on the piano. Um, there's a wonderful recording of him playing Villanelle. And also a lot of examples of him playing um, orchestral works. Very famously, he's often cited when you listen to recordings of the Ravel Pavan, the famous horn solo at the beginning of that. He was born at the beginning of the 20th century, I think just before the First World War, studied in Paris. He was the principal horn of the Paris radio and the Paris opera um, and lots of really influential ensembles. So there's a big discography of his orchestral works. But one of the really useful sources for finding out about his playing is the amazing 1960s survey of European horn playing that was done by, I think, ben, Wendell, Wendell um, X-Line. And we've got these photos showing Lucien Tove's hand position, which is just incredible. He does something like that, which, I mean, you'd get in so much trouble if you taught a horn player to play with this hand position. So whilst I'm not trying to do his vibrato in this, this piece I've recorded this week, I am trying to do his hand position, which just feels really, really odd. And the piece in question this week was I've actually gone to Teve's teacher, uh, Edouard uh, Villemos, and a transcription, again, we've got this theme going, they're, they're all sort of uh, transcriptions of uh, famous pieces. So this is Villemos's um, arrangement of the Schubert song, um, Stanchen, uh, Serenade in French. Uh, yeah, so yeah, this week, uh, Selma, Chorus um, trying to get the vibe of Lucien TV and a transcription by his teacher, Eduard Villemoz, of the Schubert song, Stanchen or Serenade. <laughs> 